Should I munch this apple for an ASMR thing in the in the mic? You don't want juice on the mic, that's for sure. I don't think no, but I think we should have a, a segment where you make an ASMR video eating an apple. Hello, everyone. My name is Dominic Masana, and today I want to introduce the first mom sauce ASMR segment. But, wow, that was a big bite. <laughs> um, what, what episode is this week? It's seven. This is episode seven. Uh, today we have actually our first Zoom interview. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so I am on a very small group of comics in Toronto, uh, across Canada really, who are repped uh, by Comedy Records and been around for he was saying about 13 years now which is insane that's amazing this is the only comedy label in canada now there are more okay. but he was one of the first, the first. From my understanding and honestly you know it was really good to talk to him i'd rather i would have rather have done it in in person but we got to do the zoom thing mm. uh but so many of my like early comedy memories are doing like these like east coast tours across canada with comedy records that's how you learn that's where you're learning the most you're getting the most like pivotal pi pivotal, pivotal pivotal times <laughs> those times are the are the those are the best years you know what i mean you don't it doesn't feel like it then but then you look back in there and you're like man i really i want that back i love that and, time and that's the thing you know like i was talking with with barry you know about that where we were both talking about because i asked because barry used to do stand-up and he's now just full-on manager and I asked him, I'm like, do you ever miss stand-up? And he's like, he misses hanging out at the back of the room with friends, mm. shooting the shit, watching your friend bomb. Not that, not the feeling when you tell a joke and everyone laughs. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, because it is like, there is like a thing about that time. And I don't know if it's the same in music or other industries, but there's... Because in stand-up, you're by yourself. Oh, the hang is very real. I know, you know exactly what you mean. Like, you're by yourself on stage, but you're always in like ideally a group of friends mm -hmm. while you're going to show to show mm -hmm. and and i i all the time think about i was like man going back to that time where like i had no care in the world pretty much and i just know running from show to show that was the best and that was the thing that's where i met barry and i i remember i kind of ended the interview with him uh saying this where before he started comedy records I I knew that he was he has a background in music. He was working mm. on uh on a popular radio station in Toronto and he's always been in music. And I knew that he was I don't even know how or why I approached him with it, but I was listening to uh I think it was 36 Chambers and there's like a sketch about I don't know if it was like just sew your asshole clothes and keep <laughs> no. feeding you and feeding yeah, you. Yeah, like, look, Barry, we gotta you. really, we gotta <laughs> really okay, step bad. up our game my here. Bad, bad. <laughs> no, but I don't know if it was Thirty Six Chambers, but there was that sketch where they're on the radio, and I don't know who was talking, but essentially they were saying who each member was and what their role was in Wu Tang. I know exactly what you're talking about. And then he was I like, love that record. At the end, we form like Voltron. Yeah, man. And and I remember. Yes talking to barry i was like man we need a comedy version of this we need a comedy version of a bunch of people who have skills in different areas 
And when we come together, we form like Voltron. We talked about this before with like having a crew or a troop or whatever yeah. you want to call it. Like some of the coolest ones, like their stories are with the Letter Kenny guys, like yeah. all these, this circle of comedians that kind of are popping out of Toronto right now, Steph, um, K Trev, all these, all the homies, you see it happening, right? That That's a good sentiment you're making there because it's valuable. That's a valuable thing to get in a part of a crew. I've been in a couple in New York City that you worked for a while, then fizzled out, worked for a while, then fizzled out. There's no other feeling like that than a bunch of like-minded individuals that aren't, their egos aren't, they're not, they're allowing them to put the work forward. And, and no one's bigger than the work. No one's bigger than the laughs, than the music. I miss that. I miss that. Once you get older, it becomes a little bit more like cutthroat and who's going to get what and do what. And but. it's funny because like what you said, I think is a, the biggest problem with comedians is <clears throat> ego. Yeah. Because you look at, you have the Wu-Tang, you know, <laughs> grew up in the, the slums of Shaolin. <laughs> and Let's they go, they all understand how to work together mm -hmm. where you have some comedian who grew up very fine you know yeah. no, no problems without it has an ego to be like i'm gonna do all this by myself and this is why comics are stand-up specifically are it really blows my mind because the, the 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 prototype of a musician of a group elevates you so much more and comics do not like to work together now where it started to happen obviously we've talked about the podcast era joe rogan started that teeter-totter thing. you're seeing a lot of comedians that normally would do their own thing join up together and have a even if they're two different bobby lee andrew santino two very different people yeah. tom segura and burt kreischer two very different people like it's never happened <clears throat> in stand-up and it was it really has been the uh, the digital social media era because I remember I knew a guy I don't even know like I kind of knew him he's like a family friend he had a very popular uh, Instagram account and I and my dad was like oh this guy has this account blah 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 he knew that I was doing stand up and mm. I remember one thing that he told me and it's something that I think we've talked about and and I've never heard it at this time when he told me was the only way you're going to grow is by collaborating with people and then you want to collaborate with people people who have a similar following numbers wise to you mm. so if i didn't know you and we both had let's say three four thousand on instagram i'd be like hey man let's do some videos together yeah. and then ideally i get some of your followers you get some of mine mm -hmm. and then once the numbers grow you now go to the next level and you're like at seven thousand now and you keep and this is what these guys this is what yeah. influencers do and comedians started doing that because there's a lot of guys out of Toronto and but in general, man, it it goes back to what you're saying though. To do, you have to drop the ego if you're going to recognize what you need to get to the next step. And it, most of the time, to get to the next step, you got to hang out with these cats that are just simply better than you at what you do. That's it. it. So if you are uncomfortable with being the worst in the room, get the fuck out of the room. It blows my <clears throat> mind how many people I've known for a long time and was completely unaware of the ego that they had oh man like it, it ego is such a we it's such a funny weird thing and there's a difference of being confident i was just gonna say and an ego the thing about the ego too that people like to forget is that it works both ways like people can have an ego and be pompous and arrogant about themselves but their ego can also drag them down yeah it can also make them very sad and depressed and emotional and not want to be worked with because they're arrogant or pompous but because they're a drag because they're not fun because they're negative they're not cool to be around even if they are really fucking good at what they do it doesn't matter this the ego is a make or breaker in our business i'm, I'm convinced and of we're it. and we're past that time of like you know sex drugs and rock and roll yeah. now it's like nerds books can we hang out in a room for 12 hours and work <laughs> nerds you know books what i mean and chill you yeah. know where <laughs> it's like hey man if you're too much i don't want to be around yeah, you exactly. i don't need this like, i don't even want you to be too excited like no, that and, it's and like it's like we all need to keep it at like a mm -hmm. simmer a light boil you're fucking right you know and it's the same thing like look at comics for example like if you look at probably any comic up to like the mid 90s to early 2000s they were insane people dude it's a simple simple um experiment or however you want to do it 
look back on your life, I do this all the time. Any cool gig I've ever got was because I surrounded myself with people that are better than me. Yeah. And I like humbly made a relationship. Any cool gig that I've lost is because I've done something that people don't want to be near me anymore. Yeah. Whether it's just my personality because it rubs in the wrong way. Maybe I'm too excited about something. That's my MO. I'm too excited about stuff and I'm, I put too much again, yeah. too much into it. And it's like, dude, chill the fuck out. You know, like and we've talked about that on this podcast <laughs> before. It's, it just sucks when rappers aren't stoked about you. <laughs> like, well, it's like that whole thing will, will, will bust your ego immediately. Like who can be the coolest cucumber in the room is like, is is the goal right and as soon as you come in being like i have this cool idea for this i think we should take the music here i have brought this instrument i brought this blah 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 let's it's like slow down kid like well, jesus i got two things to say to that one is and I, I don't know if we've talked about it on the podcast or just in general and i told you i think about that bernie mac set oh man okay so the bernie mac set is something that i think about quite a lot where i love i ain't scared I, of you motherfucker set i yeah, love that set, i dude. think it was at the apollo or somewhere in harlem i don't know where it was but you look at the energy that the audience is giving him mm. and he did not change like an ounce of his energy <sighs> and if you think about how insane that is to be like you have thousands of tons of Fuck. screams and energy coming at you and you just stand there being like i ain't scared of you motherfuckers kick it yeah and, and like, then the music oh, and then they dude. just kept going crazier and crazier and crazier so good and to i that's why like as a comic i look at like as a person it's like you're either going to be a, a laser beam which is what he was during that set where yeah, man. a laser beam took all the light in and put this fine tune light out or a spotlight this is i use this in a comedy analogy where it's like you're gonna light the whole stage up mm. you're gonna be bright you're gonna be all over the stage but you're really you're just gonna be bright you know like yeah and there's a lot of comics that do that they're not fine mm -hmm. laser beams <sighs> man i really love that you're saying that because this is part of this new venture that we started out that makes me the most insecure or gets my ego move in either direction i hate hearing myself speak and i've showed a couple episodes to my dad or like people i care about and they're like dude you seem supernatural or my dad's like you use you say literally too much oh what the man. fuck is that I, you say um too much what the fuck um, what is that like i say um like literally and, and then he said something more specific which really i had to think about this for an hour he goes you know yeah it sounds dumb when you use too many superlatives and i was like what what are you talking about and now what i think is superlative a I mean, superlative just yeah so i thought he I was never even heard this word before so i thought it was something else when he said it he goes you use words like about people that would make them feel uncomfortable like you call someone a legend or you okay. or you say master this is master or like oh okay. or whatever of that thing and he goes you don't need to do that like like it sounds like you're over exaggerating you know for the sake of just using the word legend he's like this is someone who does what they do they're good at it and you're here to tell the people about it like and that's, that's it, it. Just, and you know yeah. what i you know i didn't think about it every one of those episodes i'm like legend co comedian marked a bonus from toronto oh yeah <laughs> and then yeah, we pan yeah. over your face and you're like what <laughs> like you know and it's it's not bad you know it's cute for lack of a yeah. better way to explain it but it's also like there are different ways to explain things and really people are they're attracted to you and vulnerability they want to feel like they can know you and a lot of that stuff is surface value nonsense it, it just gets used to like excite someone into looking at what you're doing and really what's going to make people watch is just us being ourselves and trying to wholeheartedly provide information that we think is cool too you yeah know? and i and i think that's what it's all about really is just you know being ourself and not trying to be something that we're not and yeah. just and I've said it to you before, we don't even know what this podcast is about, but <laughs> you have been successful in what you do by curating and, and being in group settings and working with people. And I've, in, a, in my own way, done that where it's like I've hosted shows that people wanted to come to week after For week. Sure. I've worked with a lot of great comics and our instincts and our judgment 
is something that got us to where we are. Without a doubt. And if we just kind of push forward with that mentality, people will hopefully be like, yeah, like I can put this on over the next four days and come in and out. You know, maybe we're not going to be talking about conspiracy stuff as much, but the more we get into these, this right here, <laughs> the more we got something. The Nike, this flush, Nike flush. I completely agree, man. Um, just just saying we're going to do this and do it and then throwing the ego aside and trying to be as honest as we can i think is 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 cool in its own regard yeah. so even if it doesn't work out or however you want to describe this being successful i love that there's two people that that care about what's going on in their life and we're trying to get it out to the yeah. rest of you know our community at least right now so well i think let's cut to the interview we got our first Zoom interview with, with Barry Taylor. Yeah, I'm excited about this. I wanted to learn a little bit more about comedy records anyways. Yeah. It's going to be cool. So let's see what's up. Barry, uh, why don't you just let people know, like, first of all, a little bit of who you are and, uh, you know, where you're at now. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so I guess started uh, comedy records in 2010. You and I actually were you were one of the first people i talked to about it and uh was definitely wanted to work with you right away and i, I don't we knew each other well enough then like i was just starting out in comedy you had started out a bit before me but you, but you were at the you were like killing it like you were just hitting like winning every contest getting every award like you were well on your way um and then yeah the whole idea was i had worked in radio in toronto got let go and then wanted to work in stand-up so my idea was to take like the independent music label model and apply it to comedy so just to make comedy albums to build shows and, and tours around and that was kind of the idea and um yeah just insanely just decided to do it and go for it and um uh yeah still still going now so i i don't perform i'm performing stand-up i think the last set i did was um i actually i did the club in hamilton my hometown in like i think it was like the april before in 2018 like before the pandemic and then after that i was like yeah i've, I've hit my uh peak <laughs> <laughs> do, do you think i know it's weird because we know each other i'm asking like interview questions but do you yeah, yeah, yeah. uh do you think about like doing stand-up every once in a while or is that ship no, officially no. sailed yeah i don't really like the stuff i miss is like when i honestly miss not miss but i would be open to again like doing stuff like when we would do open mics and say it'd be like you and me and like the and there's no one in the crowd, but we're just making each other laugh and drinking beers. Like that stuff to me was that I would, I, I mean, I, no, I wouldn't do it, but it's like, I'd be like, Oh, that was fun. I like that. But the rest of it, no, I'm good. I, I, that, that is the part that like people don't realize, obviously, because it, it's fun at the time, but it also sucks. But then you're like, that is what is the most missed thing i guess about just thinking about like not knowing what the hell was going on and hanging out in a room watching your friend bomb and talking yeah. in front of like you said nobody like those really were the best times and then yeah. you know it starts to come real and you're like oh this and that and you're like man i just want to go back to like sitting in some shitty bar and yeah. <laughs> you know because that and so i just to explain when you started comedy records, nothing like that was happening in Canada, right? No, yeah, no. And with, I mean, probably for good reason. Like we, it was just such a, there was no market really. And there is no entertainment industry in Canada, never mind comedy industry, just an entertainment industry in general. But then comedy is even more niche. Um, but I just really wanted to, you know, do shows and perform on shows with, people that I liked and I also thought were funny and then you know just wanted to have sort of a and like a brand I hate the word brand but you know like something behind it where you're just like no this is each time you go you'll know it's going to be these comics they'll be funny and then yeah it was just the whole like you know fake cachet thing to be able to reach out to different clubs or producers and be like oh we're from comedy records and then um uh yeah we we do shows in that and then it wasn't until like three years into the label that we actually found out that you can make real money through sirius xm play um and that 
changed everything like for good and bad like it was it was good because obviously there's um money like real revenue that could be made from the albums but at the same time i at first kind of panicked because i was like i don't want to be taking this money from comedians you know what i mean i was like so speaking with tim we just really had to figure out a business model that was fair for everyone but also we offered something and then that was when we started looking at america and and working with the um, american channels on sirius xm and then that i felt like actually comfortable where i was like okay if we're giving these artist friendly deals but we can also offer access to america i was like that's i think that's fair and there's like that's a business that that's okay and people will see value in, i guess coming from the music world you must have just were you aware that this didn't exist in comedy or were you just like, yeah, this makes sense in, in, in the music industry, but why is there not anything like that in the comedy industry? Or was it something that you just kind of were like, Oh, whatever, I'm bored. Let's get it. Like, was, was there like that because you have the music background? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, no, that's a good point. I did. So what happened originally was I wanted to just put out one album with myself and 10 other comics that I, really liked you obviously were one of them uh and we do this one album and then that was the idea it's like we'll build shows around this album and tour and that and then uh so it's you know starting to research that and look into it and i was like where would i send this to to get distributed and there was nothing like there's no there weren't even comedy albums it's not like there wasn't a label there weren't even albums like there was yeah nothing. um so Coming from the music industry, I was able to speak with uh, one of my good friends, Joe Carrier, who runs Dine Alone Records. Ed, that's one of the biggest uh, independent labels in, in music now. But um, yeah, I just went to him and I was like, hey, man, I, this is kind of what I'm thinking. And he's just such a good dude. He's like, yeah, man, I'll put it out, whatever. Don't worry about it. And then I was just like, uh, I was like, could I do more of this? Like, could I start my own thing? And was like, yeah, go for it, man. Whatever. So uh, <laughs> It's very laid back. He's like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. He's a, he's a great man. Anyone that knows him, he's, he's a very good dude. So anyway, so yeah, it was just that. And again, it was like total uh, luck or naivety that it actually turned into something that can generate revenue from sound ex from Sirius XM play at the moment. But um, yeah, it was, um, yeah, it, it was definitely, uh, it was just more out of necessity. It was like, I want to figure out how to do this and then just kind of did it. It's just funny because, like, I remember when I started stand up, you know, I, my loophole to get people, my friends never cared that I did stand up after the second year, you know, they're like, Mark, we've seen you, whatever. So it was like, my goal always at the time, like, even before Common Records was a thing, was to every year on my birthday, I wanted to do a recording. And I, I remember I did some stuff with Tim, Athamios, and like, you know, we, because we had the same birthday. And, I just remember hearing like, so when you started comedy records, obviously you want to be with like younger, fresh comics, but was there a, a lot of backlash from like older comics or the industry on releasing albums? Because when I was like a young comic, having merch or an album, I remember like these like old headliners would be like, oh, Mr. America here trying yeah. to sell something. And, and it's just like, why was it, it was such a weird thing. Like it's not, it, it was not a promoted thing at all to be a Canadian comic that had a, a DVD or, you know, an album. Like, it was very, like, Americanized. And now it's, like, you have obviously must have seen a shift uh, from then to now that now everybody has more yeah. albums than jokes. But it's like... <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But, ha yeah. like, so that's, you know, like, you, you've seen that shift over time, obviously, right? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's probably, I'm sure it's been like this since the get-go, but yeah, it's, you know, older comics always sort of look down on younger comics for whatever reason. Um, and it's not, I mean, not all older comics, that's way too big a general issue. I, I would just say the bitter comics, the old, bitter, unsuccessful comics are just like, yeah, looking for someone to take out their bitterness on, I guess. Um, but yeah, there were, I remember, I, now that you mentioned that, though, I do remember speaking to like a couple older comics just just like on just genuinely talking to them about the idea and they're like i remember them saying they're like well you're working with like a lot of newer younger comics and i was like yeah but i was like but they're all gonna be uh good like i'm like yeah but they're all gonna be yeah good. I'm like, i don't know if like, what yeah and and for the most part not everyone but like there was at least some 
close. You know, sorry, I was gonna say there's closeness in age, but there's not. There was a bit like Monty and Tim and I are of the older generation, but like we were all sort of at the same point comedy wise. You know what I mean? Like you guys were yeah. like a couple years ahead of me, but it's like you were like two or three years in, and I was you know like a year in, so it wasn't like a huge gap, right? Um, but so yeah yeah there was anyway that's a long winded answer but yeah there was definitely some older comics being like why are you working with all these new comics and i was like to me i thought it just made sense because it's like working with like as a like a sports analogy it's like all these young prospects where you're like yeah i'd way rather work with all these people that are have so much potential as opposed to trying to work with established comics and then within their you know parameters so yeah. No, and it totally makes sense. And like, obviously, over time, everyone's had to like evolve. And like, over the years, comedy records has obviously evolved, changed, grown, adapted in the sense of like, we used to do like college tours, but there still are like the college tours. But I remember like, those are like memories that, you know, any of us will have forever where we would go out east for like a couple weeks and it was just an insane time. And yeah. over the years, like, you know, Comedy Records has started a crypto. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we did. We, we tried. All right. <laughs> you know, you got the crypto. Uh, again, it being, was it ha ha or ha ha ha? Like, yeah. Was it two or three? I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. That is the thing is like, uh, always open to like um, trying new things, like always open to try new things like that. And, you know, obviously when you try new things, some will crash and burn. And then, um, just like a joke, right? It's just like, yeah, you got to get out there exactly. and, and you yeah. got to just bob and weave with it. And it's like, it's just yeah. funny because it like, as someone interviewing more than someone who's on comedy records, it's like, what, where do you see like the future of like in your mind, like the best case scenario, like where would, as you know, my wife says, what's your five year goal with comedy records? Yeah, I think um, we're definitely like ever. I mean, it's twofold. Like this, the Sirius XM royalty thing is great, but um, we're really trying to build the company out so we don't we have far more revenue streams than that. Like we definitely don't want to rely on that just because it. I just don't, it's, I don't, you know, it's not smart to rely on one revenue yeah. stream of business. Um, so we're really focused on like the management side and um, building out the live show side because the um, management side allows for more flexibility, but also we're in a unique position where we can work in Canada and America, whereas, you know, other companies in Canada don't really have that flexibility. Um, and uh and yeah and also but i i and tim tim my business partner sincerely believe in like everyone on our roster like i am positive everyone's gonna blow up like you you included like i know we've had these i mean obviously had these conversations but i'm ex like the one comic we have now k trevor wilson was the first one out of the original sort of group that exploded and he decided to stay with us he could have left but he didn't and um and which is incredible like we owe him obviously you know everything um but through that too i will say it, i really believe we provided him with a good like i think we're good at what we do in terms of management yeah. right so um but yeah but i i really think like everyone on the roster like you nick arthur claire everyone's gonna blow up so to me that's I'm excited about that because it's just a whole new world and it allows us to do so many things like, like, um, you know, you guys like obviously want to do stand up, love producing stand up shows that are awesome. And then, you know, but there's a TV and film world. There's who fucking knows what's going to come. I, sorry, I swore. But who knows what's going <laughs> to come, <down> <laughs> come down the road. Right. But I mean, like, I just really love collaborating with everyone on our, um, roster and like anything we can do to help sort of provide any um assistance to whatever ideas you guys have like i, I love that stuff just because I, I don't know i just really like working with you guys i just think everyone's extremely funny but also everyone on our roster is uh, an extremely good person too which is very important to us because uh 
it's like a family restaurant, right? Where it's like you can't be <laughs> weird because you got to work with each other or see each other, and and it's and it's just funny, like thinking about the list of stuff, like from the comedy records basketball team to the comedy records league, and then it's like there has been so much. It is in a in a way like a family where people you know love each other, hate each other, they fight, but it's always still at the end of the day. It's like it's grown so much and it's just expanding to like new levels all the time. And really, it, there I don't know if there is to the same level something like that. Like people have obviously copied copied the model, and there are things like that in different fields. But it is a very close group of people. Uh, mm -hmm. at the end of the day and it's like you know everyone's growing at their at their level and there's different speeds and all yeah. that and it, it's just going to be an exciting time in the future when like as i've said in the past on the podcast and we're all kind of sitting around on different sh like late night talk shows talking about these yeah. west coast east coast tours and yeah, all yeah. that stuff but but i think yeah. uh you know thank you for that is uh we had a good good talk here. This is our first Zoom interview, um, nice. and I'm happy that it was with you. You know, it was a good time. Yeah. As as uh, as we said 13 years ago, uh, it was funny thinking about when the initial comedy record started. I remember talking to you because I was listening to the Wu Tang album, and there was that whole conversation about them forming like Voltron. And I yeah. remember being like Barry, man. There's something here, but and everyone just in one day, it's all gonna take over everything, you know. Yeah, yeah, That's absolutely, man. and um, yeah, yeah. Just to like add to like that, and exactly what you said, like it's like uh, I don't know. We like it's you know not to keep repeating myself, but we really believe in everyone work. Like I'm, I'm. That was the one thing I did when I worked in radio. I had a lot of success in is was I was able to um so like pick bands and then before they brought them bring them to the music meetings and they would blow up but i don't whatever like i feel like for some reason i can just see stuff like that and i know i see that with every single person we we work with um like i'm i'm i like i would literally bet my life on everyone on our roster blowing up and it's but the thing to it like you like you know like the family aspect or whatever it's like it's very much um being a good person is equally important to me personally with the people we work with. Cause like, I found out very quickly, like having opportunities for comedians in particular paid opportunities. Like those are like, here's my big analogy. Those are like uh French fries. Right. And then comedians are like seagulls and you pull them out. And it's just like every fucking bird you can even think of is around Come you. flying out of the dumpsters <laughs> like good lord and then when the fries are gone they're gone and then just like yeah. I'm out. So it's like i i want um you know the I, I i i would much rather um have my own personal mike tyson group of pigeons and feed them individually <laughs> <laughs> and be like hey, yeah. man, continually bring this coop uh food and then you guys just do whatever the fuck you want in the meantime you know what i mean yeah. and you know what i don't think there's a better way to end this than uh <laughs> a, a mike tyson pigeon reference but that is that is truly um it's such a funny thing to to look at with like because that is what it is right like i've always in my analogy looked at comedians like cockroaches or vikings in the sense of like a bar where when you run a good show and then comics find out about it they just ruin that whole venue and then they move on to the next town to 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 pillage you know and that's kind of how they are and through that disaster group of people there are obviously a couple good ones and and it is a skill to point to kind of pick and see past all the the pillaging to be like hey i want to work with this person this person and and at the end of the day, yeah, like, you know, there are loyal comics out there and yeah, garbage yeah. comics for sure. And I think we got a good group here, you know, yeah. and yeah. it's just going to keep keep doing its thing. But thank you uh, yeah, for being not only the first Zoom member, but uh, for Comedy Records and introducing comedy on a record level 
tours and everything to Canadian comics, you know. But uh, but yeah, thank you, my, thank you very much, Barry Taylor. Thanks, buddy. You know, I was just gonna say one day we should have like a band in the corner to open up the show, but I was like, wait a second, Dom can play music. Dom could do the band. Dom will be in the corner. <laughs> Have my cousin Dom plays uh, the saxophone. He tells jokes. That would be funny. <laughs> Jesus. That would be like, uh, you know, we just throw a piano over there. While we're like setting up, you just start playing a bit. And then. Um, hey, look, if it's paying, I'm playing. <laughs> that's it. I don't you know. I don't touch. I don't get out of. Uh, do you guys have like a piano saying for you don't get out of bed for under. No, but one time we called this drummer out of Rochester for a gig. <laughs> And he goes, I don't really leave my house for less than two fifty. And then I see this video of him playing like down the street from his. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Bro. And that's such a weird number, like two hundred and fifty dollars. Like that's not even a lot, anyways, no. bro. Like, like what, that... what the hell's going on? Like you know, he's trying to set standards, which is which is good, yeah. but bar is not too, you know. No, no here. it's very reasonable. You know what I mean? He's like a very reasonable. I'm like, oh, actually, person. I'm glad that you you said that. <laughs> now I'm gonna call you for this gig. Yeah, like two fifty. I got it. <laughs> Oh man, what's uh, what's been going on? Oh, just plugging along here, trying to make every day worth it. <laughs> every day count. Every day count. Live every day like it's your last. Yeah, but also live every day one at a time. <laughs> yeah, there's too many sayings about the day. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, weird conspiracy right off the top because that's what we love. Um, isn't it weird that calendars are squares? Like, you look at the idea of a clock, and it's a circle, mm -hmm. right? And then you have a calendar, and it has squares. So do you think, in a weird way, that that is, like, we're stuck in a box, and the day comes full circle? That's hilarious. I, ne I never thought about it like that before. I think that when it comes in terms of organizing things for the human brain, it's easy to see things linear linearly and in a line sharp lines what's funny though is that you know a lot of people or you know professional organizers whatever you want to call it there's a lot of circle diagrams there's a lot of venn diagrams there's a lot of things that are hmm. set up circular right but not exactly composing of time not exactly like making up time but if you were to see a calendar where like <laughs> day one yeah february 1st is a circle or yeah. like and then it, instead of going to the directly right of that circle it kind of goes up and then that's february Weird. 2nd and then it goes up and then it's forming like an arc yeah yeah and the rest of the days like 30 days are in a big <laughs> circle you know it's weird yeah because you you don't see that do you think the world's flat <laughs> you know what i always have been trying to think of the number one trump card let's go for flat the world earthers being flat to flat. be like yeah how like, if the world is flat what is this um but no there was one thing that i posted a while ago and i guess somebody else kind of talked about it but it was like completely me just trying to debunk the flat earth theory okay uh and i think it was the idea of like so you're a round earther I am a normal person. <laughs> yeah, okay, good, good. <laughs> Thank you. Like, this was, this is like a loaded thing because first of all, what's the point of lying? Like really, at the end of the day, if the earth is flat or round, <laughs> what are you benefiting to say that you were right the whole time? Like pretty just, much. Yeah. Like what, who cares? First of all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and second of all, like I was thinking about, I think what I posted was like the idea that what how what does space look like earth is flat and it's like a drum set i think where i'm like what is like earth like a symbol and then everything else is round yeah, like because look at what's true is true the more you zoom out it's a ball i mean we we see pictures of the earth from the moon yeah and it's clearly a round ball like look there's a lot of weird things about space okay like i know we haven't seen the other side of the moon <laughs> i know that <laughs> the pictures that they have shown of earth apparently are debunked to be like kind of not real we're gonna go into that next because there's a bunch of moon shit that we're talking about here i mean as far as them make it's a production like the moon landing was just a really good production yeah this like is all classic. this classic shit like who, who filmed it 
they say Stanley Kubrick. But like, if it was real, like that's the whole yeah. that's the whole oh, like, myth. If they were, if they were there, how is the camera film? <laughs> well, they say Stanley Kubrick. They, yes, exactly. <laughs> they they said that we have more technology in our cell phone now than this spaceship had that yeah, went to the moon. I believe that. Mm -hmm. I wholeheartedly believe that. Like maybe the metal was thicker, you know, but that's about it. <laughs> I just don't understand what what you're gaining at the end of the day if the world the world is flat or not. There's got to be a list of things that have to do with like religious facts or like how Is it a religious thing? I don't know, or? but there, I guarantee you someone's tying that into something. I got Scientology it. or some shit, you know. You know like that theory exists. You know someone that's like you know the Earth is flat. Is also like well, you know, also the, the it's only three thousand years old. Or have you seen the book yeah. of Genesis? Like are you, you know, shit like that. They're you dropping know, some. They're dropping some type of thing there. There's some correlation. Like, well, I was talking with my friend today actually because this is what we talk about on the phone for whatever reason. <laughs> and the idea of Adam and Eve is has always been weird to me, right? Because first of all, I think I've even told you like the whole idea of the chicken and the egg. <laughs> You have the oldest book, apparently the Bible, mm. and you have Adam and Eve, and there's a snake. So wouldn't the original thing be what came first, the snake or the egg? Because snakes come from eggs. Well, the, the and in the Bible, there's a, in Adam and Eve, there's a snake. I love, I love this. The snake is the devil. So the snake. So but right. The, so was the devil hatched? Is the question, or did it just what appear? Came first, right, the snake or the egg? <laughs> the <But> snake <laughs> or the egg is so good, dude. <laughs> Christians are rolling in their grave right now. Because so Eve is the rib. Well, right? this is, so this is what it comes down to. Adam and Eve, to me, I think it makes... When, the, way, the way I look at it is atom, A-T-O-M, oh. and evolution. Oh. This is like oh. my longtime conspiracy where... Matter and atoms. And I that's think that oh. because you think about the idea of Adam and Eve, and it's like you just have these two. Oh, it's an acid trip. It doesn't make the book of Genesis around. doesn't make any fucking sense. But dude. in the sense of atoms are what make matter or whatever mm -hmm. it is, and Eve as an evolution, that now is like w makes way more sense to me. Whoa. Yeah, that's that's like a, a, this a is, deep thought. Yeah, that's that I, a heady metaphor. I have that thought a lot. Heady metaphors with Mark DeBonis. We'll be right back. <laughs> that's incredible, dude. Yeah. I never even thought about that. Because there's, it's impossible. Like ancient aliens, all this stuff. It's impossible. We're not. This is not going to be a conspiracy episode. I was just, we, literally we'll, just going to say. We'll move on. <laughs> but we have, there's no way we're at the, the peak of technology right now. And I believe that what we're probably because first of all are we even in the digital age you have the bronze age the stone age or whatever it is <laughs> i don't know if we've even officially been classified as the digital age like that's where we're going for sure yeah like what does that mean though like i can think about being somewhere and i'm there is that the digital I age like I don't, the... I don't even know what classifies the bronze age as the bronze age <laughs> um it has to be the statues <laughs> there dude. has to be some, <laughs> just, something to do with bronze yeah but, all that metal work <laughs> but what i think is going to probably happen is or what has happened in the past and this is literally what me and my friend were talking about on the phone this morning is that there will like in the past they were way ahead of us that's why when I think about atoms and evolution, it was like a metaphor of a story that makes sense because you you know, and it's mm -hmm. whatever. But they were way ahead of us, and there was a crash of energy, like a full on breakdown. Mm. And if you think about the idea now that everything is on the cloud, what happens if there's a massive power outage and we lose? The I thought cloud? about that. Yeah. We're literally now technically Stone Age again. Yeah. And then over time, all this shit's going to disappear. And we all we have are stories and graffiti, you know? Jeez. All I can think about while you're talking about this is how much we're not getting laid right now in our life. <laughs> and it's it's really funny because I'm generally very interested in what you're yeah. talking about. And I know you're interested because you know a lot about this and I ask you about, the, we talk about this. This, shit is, this like, is definitely a late night conversation. What's real is we need some, and we could bleep it out, but some pussy. <laughs> Dude, this is fucking there needs crazy. to be a balance for sure. Well, yeah. I had a weird situation actually yesterday to happen that I wanted to kind of touch on here where... Um, I ordered Indian food yesterday when we were supposed to meet up okay. and uh, I'm on the phone and 
I'm ordering, uh, you know, the whatever I order, and the lady was like, "Do you want the garlic naan or do you want garlic naan?" And I said, "Non garlic." And then she's oh, like, "Oh, you motherfucker, dude!" And, and she's, <laughs> like, she's like, "She's like, okay, so the garlic naan," and I'm like, "Non garlic." You fucked her up, dude. <laughs> and she's like, and this honestly went on for like, this is your pepperoni cheese slice I, I, shit. I know because at the at the time. It didn't even pr cross my mind You're what was asshole. happening. Non, you yoded her. <laughs> I know. That's what you did. You yoded your. Then, you yoded your Indian order, dude. She was like, "Okay, I got the alu uh, alu gobi or uh, gobi, whatever, and uh, and then the non bread, but I wanted non garlic non bread. Non -bread. <laughs> so then when I kept saying non garlic, she was like, "Okay, so you want the garlic non?" And I'm like, "Non garlic," <laughs> and she's like, "Yeah, okay, I can hear you," and I'm like, "No." And then I realized, <laughs> yeah, bro, you're fucking her up right I, I now. Re I realized <laughs> her mind is exploding. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I know what's happening right now. And she's like, uh, and uh, and she didn't even, she didn't really respond to that. And I was like, I want the order with no garlic on the bread. And she's like, so you want the non garlic? And I'm like, what? <laughs> like now I'm confused because I'm like, are you saying no? And then when I went to pick it up when I was talking on the phone. She was like, "You did you want garlic or not?" And I'm like, "No." And she's like, "Okay, we gave you no garlic." There we go. And I'm like, "This was the most confusing <laughs> situation because I didn't realize non. I don't know if obviously nope. a, non garlic. <laughs> yeah, that's like, hilarious. Dude. It was an insane like. That's the leaf grape that you want. Grape leaves. Look at <laughs> that is." In so many different ways. We're talking about a language barrier here. You know what I mean? Oh, it, it is. A, it, but I don't even know if that's a language barrier because it's a... No, it's I, like, I'm, it's almost like it worked the opposite way around. And, and you that, know what I mean? And, <laughs> and that's what I'm saying because do you know that whole thing about who's on first or, you know, that whole like old like vaudeville sketch? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I felt like it was where <laughs> it was like, who's on? Because the guy's name was who, I think. And they're like, who's on first? Yeah, yeah. And then this is what me and this lady had. We had a whole act together <laughs> with the garlic, non, non-garlic. And that's then, hilarious. Like, I love that. You know, but it's, <laughs> it's funny. We were talking about all this old stuff though. Um, Cause I was kind of mentioning to you, I think before the idea about like wisdom teeth. And mm. when I'm starting to get sick, I feel like my wisdom teeth hurt. I, do you have wisdom teeth? No, every one of my wisdom teeth are are out of my mouth. Do I have you, a. They've all been taken out. You all removed four them. Have been removed. Oh wow! This is actually. It's funny that you even brought this up. We say this shit all the time, but you, you remind me of some certain things. And I don't know if this is tan. If am I leading leading you astray no, on a tangent? Please. But getting my wisdom teeth out opened up a world of new experience for me in the craziest way. That's I discovered drugs from this. Like this started from your wisdom from teeth. getting my wisdom teeth <laughs> taken out. So the correlation of like, you know, being wise, the opposite happened to me when I got my wisdom. Yeah, your teeth eyes were open. My eyes were the, Pandora's box. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Any anytime anyone mentions wisdom teeth, I go immediately right back to being like, ooh, uh, hydrocodone and smoking my bong. Like you know, <laughs> just like the most ridiculous combination. But, so when you got your wisdom teeth out like I mean it was such a surreal experience. It was the first time in my life that I had been put under like cognizantly mm. like knowing that i was gonna like a doctor's like okay now you're gonna feel a little funny and you're gonna go to sleep that mixed with like two weeks of heavy sedation with painkillers and like being home during school and like also that time was like it was the age in which we really all of us were into weed so we're sneaking weed around the house and i'm like trying to figure out ways to get high while i have literal four holes in my mouth like it's just a very, very specific time. For every time I think about it, I get those that feeling of like the nostalgia feeling of like my mouth hurts, but I'm fucking wrecked at my mom's house watching <laughs> The Price is Right. You know, yeah. school time TV. Like it was, it's, it was amazing and terrifying all at the same time. And that's what led you to uh, drugs. It, that's that that first instance of getting my wisdom teeth taken out. I had a fr I had a friend at the time who knew a lot about chemistry which is this is funny but we all kind of have one of those either we hung fur far away from those kids back in the day <laughs> yeah, or yeah. we had a couple that were too close and i had a friend that was really close he knew a lot about um how two different drugs would react in your body he did a lot of research on it which oh, wow. is silly at that age but and i know a little bit about it. it's called synergy and what happens is is 
when two different substances are taken in, they react with their receptors in the body, but they create a synergistic effect depending on what two drugs are. And it just so happens when you <laughs> take some painkillers of the opiate class and mix them in the rays of metabolism that weed does to you when you smoke it, you get this wild synergistic effect. So it's weed in this pill. It's weed and, 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 a, and an opiate. Some oh, wow. type of opiate. And I remember this was the first form of my experimentation of drugs back in the day. This is hilarious. I'm so sorry, mom and dad, because we are all <laughs> in the same house at this time. But what we would do is my dad would probably be at work at the restaurant or something. And my mom would be teaching and I'd be home alone all day. So one of my buddies would either play hooky or come leave school early and come to my crib. It would be known that someone had a prescription for some type of painkiller. We would indulge and then we would smoke out of my bong, right? And I was known for having this, I had a king size zong bong in high school that I nicknamed Terry Shivo. <laughs> <laughs> because when you smoked it, you turned into a vegetable. Anyways, <laughs> so, so now we would take a couple painkillers, smack Terry Shivo around a little bit, and then we'd go to my front porch and play this game called ca Cars. <laughs> Cars. <laughs> Sorry, this is so ridiculous. Where you'd pick a number, and whatever number a car would drive. So the, my number is three. One car drives by. Two cars go drive. The third car is the car I'm gonna get when I have enough money to get the car. Just like some wow shithead dream pipe yeah, dream you have. Is, uh... But what's the most <laughs> fucked up part of the story? It was the most fun. Yeah, you're, <laughs> like, like... <laughs> you're, you're on a porch with a friend who's just as fucked up as you, going four. <laughs> You're all like so stoked to see this number four Subaru Outback. And you're like, ah, you bitch, you got the Outback. You know, <laughs> that is like the definition of like simple times. It, you know? I can't think of a time I was probably happier <laughs> after that point in my life. Do you know what I'm saying? All the well, problems started after that. What was the highest number you guys went to? Oh, it, that's what you, that would be like the funny part of the game, right? Where you'd get like two four like six maybe and then all of a sudden someone would go 38 <laughs> and you'd be like oh god dude he's sitting there for like an hour to the 38th car like, did you ever lose count and have to yeah of course mark <laughs> someone ended up falling asleep most of the time <laughs> nodding out before we could count to nine you know like classic yeah you had a way different <laughs> wisdom tooth story than what me feeling like i'm getting sick how much pudding did your mom make <laughs> <laughs> i still have my wisdom teeth all of them yeah you, really you've never had problems from it no that so they hurt every once in a while okay and they're for sure growing in and i, I remember going through some serious pain mm -hmm. but i'm like whatever because my mouth just I got shifted around because i have one of them is for sure out. Like, it's just there now. Um, <laughs> it's doing its own thing. <laughs> it's like in the, I, I, I don't know what side it is, but, and I've been to the dentist and they didn't say that it was, there was no nerves or, yeah. Cause I know that's a problem is like if a nerve wraps You'll around. You'll know it, yeah, immediately yeah. what the hell is going on. I like, had no problem. But then I started thinking because I had some, uh, before I moved to uh, Los Angeles, I'm like, okay, I got to go get myself put together before i leave yeah, the country. Yeah, yeah and i remember i had some i went to the dentist and i had some cavities or whatever that had to be filled and it was probably the most traumatic mouth experience i've had in a long time mm. and i'm not joking i feel like by the end my wisdom tooth grew in and i thought about <laughs> it and i was like Fuck? i was like if you think about the idea of our body this is like a very heady episode yeah no pun intended to the tooth um <laughs> But if you think about it, it's like, what happens if that's kind of what the wisdom tooth was, where like a long time ago, some barbarian bit something, broke a tooth, and then they have these extra teeth that now grow in. Yeah, like it's an evolutionary trait yeah, or like something. Yeah, like it's something that we have four stock teeth just waiting. I feel like it has a lot to do with how rough the food used to be, like how it's non-processed, or we needed more teeth to get through it. Like, yeah, it's definitely possible because I felt like going through a traumatic mouth experience triggered my wisdom teeth to grow in let me tell you first of all getting stuff i hate the dentist i hate mouth surgery all that yeah. shit is is the worst and you know what now that we're thinking about it i had my first two top wisdom no my first two bottom wisdom teeth taken out in high school what happened is in the first year of college uh it was the first semester i ended up coming down with a crazy cold or okay. sickness and 
I have feeling on the roof of this is nasty, but on the roof of my mouth were these like lumps and they were warm. So there were I could feel like with my tongue that they were warm. I remember one night I had this headache. I'm in my dorm room. I'm literally tripping balls. I got like two roommates next to me. I'm like, you guys, I am tripping and I didn't take any drugs. Like something fucking is going on. I got a crazy headache. They're like, dude, let's get you the nurse or whatever. I ended up going to the nurse. This nurse is tongue depressing these things on the roof of my she's like honey you have an infection this is insane i don't know what the fuck this is your wisdom teeth look a little it's all red back here like you need to go home i'm nine hours away in new york city you know i take next day i find out i find a flight get all my shit together i go home go to the doctor and he's like yeah you have a severe infection on the roof of your mouth and it's because your wisdom teeth are are impacted like literally he goes you're like who knows a week away from this getting to your brain you could have this could have been a very Holy. serious situation like, those headaches turn into like seizures and shit yeah and people well, literally just because that's what i heard happens with like if you have like yeah like a problem mm-hmm. i remember going home oh this is crazy but the second they take those two teeth out it was like Relief. It looked like an exorcism in that goddamn <laughs> <laughs> in that dentist room it felt so good it, it was incredible. All this pressure had gotten released from my face, literally. Um, That's insane. So it's an insane thing. Like a lot of, I, I like to say that dentists are straight bullshit <laughs> <laughs> yeah. because they cost so much money, but there are certain things that literally you just don't know about, which, you know, you have to get taken care of. It's a hard, it's a hard thing, right? Cause you know, you look at all these old skulls that they find and their teeth are all fine. Yeah. You know, they all like had, better looking than yeah, some of our like, shit. It's, it's crazy. clearly like everything you know, I don't even want to get into more of the stuff me and my friend were talking about on the phone because there's more about it. <laughs> but I feel that like with my wisdom teeth, I know if I'm like, this is what I was saying about when they hurt. It's like, it's weird because I feel like they start to hurt when my body's not at a hundred percent. Yeah. There's some type of inflammation going on or yeah, whatever. And yeah. it goes away mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh, why is, why is this kind of like, I feel it and I'm not supposed to feel it. Yep. And then I, that's when I kind of like, lock down on like you know maybe take a tylenol it's funny the human body's wild because i know know how to read it that right and the the sooner you become a little bit more in tune with yourselves and the things your body tells you i remember being younger being like i don't know when or why i'm sick or even what it is i just automatically feel like shit or whatever as i'm getting older i can tell like three days before I'm going to yeah, get yeah. sick. My back hurts. Something in something my is neck, off. in my yeah. something's not right. I'm not sleeping right. I can't, I get it. Remember that? It was two weeks ago. I'm like, N- Mark, I got a kink in my neck. Yeah. Two days later, I'm like, dude, I cannot come and hang. I'm yeah, sick. Yeah, I, no. This isn't going to work. That was when like, I knew you were sick before you knew you were sick. It, it, yeah. It's crazy. You're like, something in his eyes. It's like the, <laughs> yeah. the par- parasite movie or some shit. No, I could hear the voice. The voice is like the number one sign for me. Like, I know that if I've never met you, I don't know your voice, but I know a voice that's sick compared to like a nasally sure. talk. You sure, know? sure, sure. And um, <laughs> well, to talk, I guess, about this whole reading the body stuff, like this is what I said I didn't want to talk about, but this was the last thing I'll say where, you know, during the whole lockdown, I fell into trying to t- learn my uh, learn how to code and program. Dude, And we... Yeah, when's the last time you saw Amanda, dude? I know. I, I, I know. <laughs> this I'm, is crazy. I'm really losing my mind. What the fuck? So dude? I'm over here being like, really? You were coding? <laughs> what were you coding? Yeah, yeah. I was <laughs> hacking into the mainframe. Fuck. No, um, I was learning how to do it, and I realized how important words are. As stupid as this sounds, where if you're trying to put that in the middle of the screen oh yeah everything needs to be perfect yeah mm-hmm. and if it's not it's not going to move from the top left corner yeah and i thought about that and i'm like you know the whole ai you know we people think we live in a simulation i'm like programming and coding it, it could be it is a language if obviously. someone's good at it like really good, there are people that are really but good it started at it. to make me think and this might actually be something that you can not relate to but you would understand where I believe that there are chants and a series of words or notes or music that if they're all said together, shit starts happening (laughs) because I believe that we don't know anything about our body and our mind is so powerful and you can't control, like this is literally what I was saying to my friend, what's the difference from you to Jeff Bezos? Nothing. It's just your levels, how the levels of stress in your life affect the way you act. 
But at that, the end of the like day, it's like the prefrontal cortex shit is what I mean. Emotions, right? Like, and, and at the end of the day, he's a human just like you are. Yeah. But for all we know, he's on some sort of like <laughs> ancient diet that opens up some <laughs> stuff. portal. Yeah. And yeah. and it's like all the food, fast food, sugar, all this garbage that we eat. Who's to say that that's not there to like keep dumb down us down, keep us down? This power oh yeah, or that we have in our body. And it's like all of it, the phone, the whole, the whole thing, all the shit. Everything we do is like, I'm not getting into like third eye. Oh, you are. I, we're we're that's almost where there. That's like That's where it is. But I do believe that at one point a long time ago, I don't think we were flying around with like superpowers, but I think yeah. that our mind was so much more powerful. And mm -hmm. then whoever's in charge knew that this sugar and garbage high fructose and, corn syrup and yeah. all that stuff can keep us Monsanto which the will farming eventually yeah. end up in control. So this is definitely going on the end of the episode. <laughs> Let's um, talk about something fun, dude. <laughs> so okay. <laughs> what we're gonna do <laughs> this is I don't even I think like I'm tired today. Fuck? I know. And I'm like Going on like I'm like staring at you, trying to like bounce yeah, it off like is, in a positive way. And no, I'm like, is, fuck, dude. Yeah, this one went high level conspiracy. We had the non bread though. The non bread. Just, the non bread's <laughs> great. I'm gonna show you videos of pilots saying that the Earth is flat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. So, that I think that fucks what, me up, dude. I think that's what sent me off was the <laughs> the the flat Earth. I'm like, oh, we're going here. Okay, here okay. we go. But no, I have um, I have a, a funny. I don't even know if it's funny. This is an old thing that i did where so in my stand-up i used to do and this is pre shark tank uh dragon's den all that mm, stuff okay i used to in my stand-up act uh pitch inventions i love that so i, would, I actually think i saw one of those there was i think the, i saw in one that of those one clip i had a couple inventions yep. that i've almost all of them have now come to life get People, the fuck out of here i'm not even joking there was one <laughs> So there was actually a one man show that I was pitching to Fringe Fest. Okay. Where I was like a Tony Robbins, Steve Jobs type of guy. Oh, that's hilarious. And in my stand up set, I have this joke about a Bluetooth glove where you talk on the phone like okay. this. Okay. That's one of the, my favorite ones just because it would look cool to do this. It, <laughs> like, and I'm like, this up, is like it. <laughs> and that is uh, a thing now. No way. I'm not even joking. The actual glove? The glove. The Bluetooth glove Get exists. Get the fuck out of here. And I'm telling you, I'm pretty confident that that was trademarked after my set aired. Okay? <laughs> yeah. The real. It came out after my set. Phone glove with Bluetooth. Yeah, and you talk. Sharper Image has it. Sharper Image, that's the one. I have like five of them. You know how many people bought those for me when it came you, out? You have one? I have multiple. I can Get put them on the all my hands. I guess I have two hands. <laughs> I can put them on every one of your hands. <laughs> Dude, um, that's crazy. I can't believe that. That came out and people... Of course I can believe it. It's not even that crazy, actually, if you if you really no, think about it. No, it's, it's very not, simple, actually. It's, it's, it's very simple. There were the other one from that set was Snowblower Shoes. <laughs> where... <laughs> Where you you walk and blow the thing and <laughs> that is not real. It's out on it's out. You're bullshitting. I'm dude. not joking. People have made Crocs. With, Shut up. With maybe uh, plows on them, not blowers. I've seen the plows, and I think one guy I saw have had little blowers on them. Shut the fuck up. And um, snow blower. I'm telling. <laughs> All right, there's like ideas for it, you know, but they're like you know. Okay, here are the plow Crocs. <laughs> These are just terrible. Dude, this is insane. Yep. Here we go. Yep. The, the, Elite Will. Universal snowblower, sk snowblower skids for shoes. What the f... This is... You got to understand. Dude, holy crap. That, I was doing that joke in like 2009, 2010, and it was online. And they're called skid shoes. Yeah. I don't... I didn't you even know. You shuffle makes, your feet and they blow the snow. That was exactly the joke. <laughs> what the fuck? So... The That's one, unreal, dude. The, and there was another one. This one was more basic where it was like, I don't even know what it was. I think it was a t-shirt with hook. I don't even remember. It had like hooks. So when you lift your shirt, your, your, when you lift your arms. No, it lift your arms. Your shirt wouldn't come out of your jeans Yeah, it had something pants. to do with hooks. I remember that. Yeah. And then someone sent that to me. Some like weird company, like literally came out with like a strap. And I was like, look, I don't know if they 
They saw it. it was the internet. It's possible that they saw it. You think they have a team that like looks for shit like that, scour the internet for weird shit? Like- when I did the laugh off set, that was that set. You know, didn't go viral, but it got probably more views than anything I had at that time. Mm. And it's all of those inventions have come to life. Um, so Shh, I was working wild. on a one man show. Never ended up doing anything, but I started making these like prototype images. And that's what brings us to this. I'm going to get up here and show you. Okay. So, show it off, dude. <laughs> this one. Dude, this is hilarious. The Nike flush. <laughs> now it's in the bag. So, Yo, toilet paper stash. <laughs> Group to raise the seat with a shoe. Did you make this? Yeah. Hand sanitizer laces. That was a stretch. You. That was that last thing you thought of. I think that was for sure. Yep. The suction cup to open doors without hand. <laughs> this was a Bro. prototype I had. You're such a germaphobe, dude. And I was like, <laughs> so it has the air freshener button. <laughs> there and and then this is where the air freshener comes out of the hole on the bottom the toilet paper stash pocket uh the hand sanitizer laces it might not be a stretch though because like when you pull it it could like lube up a bit dude these aren't dunks these are dukes these are nike dukes (laughs) this is wild bro this is the groove to raise the toilet (laughs) and that's to open up the door i was like this is genius (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the Nike flush is hilarious. I know. I made this whole thing like it's like a the swoosh, the yeah. flush, <laughs> hand sanitizing laces. That that's okay. That one we made. That's just that, like a hope. We'll workshop like, that. We got to workshop the suction cup. Very doable. Groove. Very doable. Air freshener button. Very doable. There's a pump. We're definitely pumping fresher air yeah. in there. The vent. <laughs> <laughs> You know it'd be great if you stepped in dog shit with one of these. <laughs> they're they're the, these are made to step in dog shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> actually, I, I think the opposite. The they're made to go into rest, a bathroom. Yeah, right? the first restroom friendly <laughs> shoe. <laughs> the fuck, dude. This but is like, hilarious, bro. Are you telling me that you can't see that this being a thing? Like as no. like a, a like a one time. Do you know what I see this being? Like they make a hundred of them. They yeah. cost a thousand a pair. And that's and it. They're very rare. And like all of a sudden, you know, thirty years from now, some kid who is our age walks into like a crazy futuristic <laughs> Nike store and's like just slides over the box, yeah. and the kid's like, "What?" And he's just like open it, and he sees it and he goes. The flushes? The Nike. No one has ever (laughs) brought the flushes to the store. Dude, I don't even know how I would price these. Like, Do you know that I thought I was going to post this during COVID and it was over? (laughs) Literally zero people saw it, liked it, (laughs) cared about it. But that was, uh, these are one of my many prototype inventions. I like that you... You reminisced it after the fours. You don't even know what the fours are. <laughs> I have no clue. I just literally put like Nike shoe. <laughs> it's hilarious. Those are like the Air Force Ones, aren't they? No. Nope. I'm going to show you. <laughs> I'm going to show you the shoe you made. Yeah, show me the, You're the hilarious. The this inspiration. Is the, this is the Jordan 4. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That's very similar. Is that the same one, though? It's, it's, it's. I mean, it's literally. So, it's sort of it. Like it has the yeah, it this insane. lift off in here. Yeah. The only thing you didn't put is the those little check mark boxes, which are just these, really. Yeah, but that's the that's like you know you're making a prototype for the four flush Nike four flush. The Nike flushes, dude. I love it. I'm so happy you took the time to set up a <laughs> uh, HDMI cord for this. It's yeah. incredible. Well, now we know that we can post stuff here.